Hey. Good morning Michael. Your house sure was dark when I drove past last night, isn't it about time for you to put up your Christmas lights? No, I won't be doing that anymore. Why? Afraid you'll fall off the roof? Or just too cheap to pay the electric bill? No, I've decided not to celebrate Christmas anymore. You're serious. Why? Did you join the Jehovah's Witnesses? No, but I do read the scriptures. What do you mean? Throughout scripture, Yahweh condemns mixing the customs of pagan worship into our relationship with him. For example, Deuteronomy 12 says, Be careful not to be ensnared by inquiring about their gods, saying, How do these nations serve their gods? We will do the same. You must not worship Yahweh your God in their way, because in worshiping their gods, they do all kinds of detestable things Yahweh hates. They even burn their sons and daughters in the fire as sacrifices to their gods. See that you do all I command you, do not add to it or take away from it. Deuteronomy. We never talk about that at my church. Are you sure it's even in the Bible? Yes, it sure is. How about Galatians? Does your church read Galatians? Chapter 4 says, Formerly, when you did not know God, you were slaves to those who by nature are not gods. But now that you know God, or rather are known by God, how is it that you are turning back to those weak and miserable forces? Do you wish to be enslaved by them all over again? You are observing special days and months and seasons and years. I fear for you, that somehow I have wasted my efforts on you. My pastor said that's Paul telling the Jews that they don't have to be burdened with the Seventh-day Sabbath or the Old Testament feasts anymore. No, the Sabbath and the feasts aren't a burden. Paul was writing to new believers in the Roman province of Galatia. Most of them were former pagans, sun god worshippers, who had converted to faith in Yahweh and his Messiah. After leaving their pagan ways, they were slipping back into their old traditions, like observing Saturnalia the birthday of the sun god, celebrated at the winter solstice, December 25th. Paul warns this puts salvation at risk. You're probably not understanding him right. I'm sure it's okay for us to participate in these traditions, as long as we are worshiping God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, Paul writes, The things which the Gentiles sacrifice they sacrifice to demons and not to God, and I do not want you to have fellowship with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Sovereign Master and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the Sovereign Master's table and of the table of demons. Or do we provoke him to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? The cup of demons? I'm not drinking with demons. I just put up a few lights and a tree. Nothing says Christmas like a tree. Yes, you're right. Nothing says Christmas like a tree. That's a big part of the reason I stopped celebrating Christmas. Almost every time the green tree is mentioned in scripture, it's connected with pagan worship practices. That's crazy. The Christmas tree was invented in the 1500s by German Christians. No, the tradition goes back much further than that. The prophet Jeremiah lived more than 500 years before our Messiah was born. In chapter 10, he wrote, Hear what Yahweh says to you, people of Israel. This is what Yahweh says. Do not learn the ways of the nations or be terrified by signs in the heavens, though the nations are terrified by them. For the practices of the peoples are worthless, they cut a tree out of the forest, and a craftsman shapes it with his chisel. They adorn it with silver and gold, they fasten it with hammer and nails so it will not totter. Like a scarecrow in a cucumber field, their idols cannot speak, they must be carried because they cannot walk. Do not fear them, they can do no harm nor can they do any good. What was that he said about cucumbers? My grandma was German, and she always put a little glass pickle ornament on her tree. Never mind, I'm sure it's not a big deal. God knows our hearts. The origins of the tradition don't matter, as long as we do it for God. Not if you believe the examples recorded in scripture. You remember the story of the golden calf, in Exodus 32? The people had learned the custom from their captivity in Egypt, but they dedicated the calf to God, and called the day a feast to the Lord. Yahweh was very angry. 
even after Moses interceded, 3,000 people died that day. Apparently, it's something he takes very seriously. It isn't the same thing. On Christmas, I'm not thinking about pagan gods, I'm thinking about the true and living God, and the gift he gave us, the birth of his son. What you are thinking about is important, but it doesn't make everything okay. Would it be okay for your husband to bring someone else into your bed, as long as he was thinking of you? Well no. Of course not. That's why Yahweh calls it spiritual adultery. In Revelation, he even refers to the mainstream church as a harlot, because they won't let go of these traditions, like Christmas, Easter, and Sunday worship. You're saying Christmas, Easter, and Sunday worship all have pagan roots? That's exactly what I'm saying. The winter solstice, which fell on December 25th when our Roman calendars were established, has been celebrated as the birth of the sun god for thousands of years. The word Easter comes from the German name of Asherah, the very same fertility goddess that the Israelites kept getting mixed up with. And scripture never tells us to give up Sabbath rest, it was Constantine who made it a crime punishable by death, and decreed that we should worship on the day of the venerable sun instead. Constantine was a great man, and the first Christian emperor. He truly was a man of God. Maybe, but which God? Constantine's coin set his face on one side, and a picture of the sun god on the other, along with the words, Sol Invitus Committee, which means, committed to the invincible sun. As for being a great man, he murdered his wife and son years after he claimed to have converted to Christianity. Just because Constantine wasn't perfect doesn't mean the holidays are wrong. Christmas, Easter, and Sunday worship may have started with the pagans, but they were Christianized by the Roman Church. Did they Christianize the pagan holidays, or did they paganize Christianity? Mixing something bad into something good makes it all bad, not all good. If you don't believe me, try it with dog poop and cookie dough. It's the same thing Yeshua meant when he said, a little leaven leavens the whole lump. Who? Yeshua. You've heard him called Jesus, but his name was Yeshua. It means, Yah saves. Or, since Yahweh means, I am, Yeshua's name also means, I am salvation. How's that for a way to introduce himself? I'm starting to think you're crazy. My Bible says his name was Jesus. Couldn't be. There was no J sound in Hebrew, Aramaic, or Greek. The letter J wasn't invented until 1500 years after his resurrection. You are crazy. Next you're going to tell me that Santa Claus is the devil. Don't take my word for it. Why don't you grab your dictionary and tell me what it says when you look up the phrase Old Nick? I'm not wasting any more time with you. The things I say are simple and easy to verify. All you have to do is care enough to look them up for yourself. Yeshua, commonly called Jesus, gave many specific warnings against observing the traditions of men instead of the commandments of God. The days God commanded us to keep are outlined in Leviticus 23, the seventh day Sabbath, Passover, unleavened bread, first fruits, the feast of weeks, trumpets, atonement, and tabernacles. Yahweh is very precise. Had he meant that we should observe these until the Messiah came, or until the Holy Spirit came at Pentecost, or until the temple in Jerusalem was destroyed, he would have said so. Instead, Yahweh said we are to observe these feasts forever, through all our generations, no matter where we live. Yeshua never told us to celebrate his birthday, and he wasn't born in December. Christmas, Easter, and Sunday worship are the traditions of men. Yahweh hates Christmas, and we have no excuse for disobeying him. Why does that seem so radical to you?